friends! Welcome to our very first virtual reptile expo. My name is Audra and I am the founder of Lick Your Eyeballs Reptiles and I'm so excited um, to welcome you to our facility today. Um, this weekend, normally we are at the Sacramento Reptile Expo, but due to COVID, um, that's obviously not happening, um, and we actually haven't done a reptile expo since March. Um, and normally that's where we sell a lot of our animals, so those animals are here today for you to meet. Um, we will also be visiting two other facilities here over the weekend, um, here in the San Francisco Bay Area. We'll be visiting the East Bay Vivarium and Iron Triangle Reptiles. Um, we will be chatting live with you in the chat. So as we go, if you have questions, um, be sure to just ask them in the chat. If you want to purchase animals, every animal has either a name or a number and we will be saying them as we go. All of our geckos here are named after cities in California. Um, so we'll give you the name, type it into the chat, and that's how you purchase the animal. After the show, we will contact you to arrange payment and arrange shipping. If you purchase animals from more than one of the facilities, um, we can ship together. So you'll only have to pay one shipping charge um, for the weekend, um, even if you buy from multiple um, of us vendors. I wanted to start the weekend off with some Madagascar geckos. I'm gonna be introducing you to two different endemic species um, of geckos. Endemic just means that they're found nowhere else in the world. So we're gonna look at two species from Madagascar. This first one is a standings day gecko. And day geckos, um, like their name says, are diurnal, they're awake at during the day. Most geckos are awake at night. Um, true geckos also don't have eyelids, so they lick their eyeballs, and they've got the sticky toe pads. So she's got all of those. She's got the no eyelids, the sticky toe pads, and there's a lot of different types of day geckos that come from Madagascar and the surrounding islands, and they've done a pretty good job at evolving to fill all of the different niches in the island. Um, so Standings day geckos specifically come from the southeastern part of the island where it gets really hot and really dry. Um, which is why they don't have that bright coloration that a lot of day geckos that you might be familiar with have. Um, like the grandest day gecko, the Madagascar giant day gecko. They're bright green with red spots. They live in tropical forests. Um, this gecko does not. This gecko lives from an area, it lives in an area that's super hot super dry. Um, it's called the spiny forest and it's filled with these weird, weird spiky trees and baobabs. Um, and the standing stay gecko actually has a very small range in this area. Um, but they have adapted to living with people pretty well. Um, they can be found on houses and buildings. Um, in the wild, I saw one on a baobab tree and all the rest that I saw were actually inside of buildings or on the outside of buildings. So they're doing a really good job at adapting to human buildings and using those as their shelter, which is pretty cool. Um, so we have three of them available for you today, and these are the last three that we have for 2020. Um, we probably won't have standing today geckos available again till mid next year. Um, so let me introduce you to the three that we do have available. Um, and these all came from the same pair. Um, standing day geckos pair bond. Um, so you can put two together and they may or may not get along. And if they do, awesome. Um, and just leave them together all the time. Um, and if they don't, you'll want to separate them. You can't, you can try to take them apart and put them back together, but usually if they don't like each other, they just don't like each other. Um, so this guy right here, um, he is a subadult male. He hatched in February and he um, has very quickly grown um, to be too big to live with his parents. So he was booted about a month or two ago, um, but they grow super, super quick. So we've got one um, subadult male and his name is Denny and he is 115. So like I said before, if you would like to purchase any of the animals, just type their name into the chat and we'll contact you after the show to arrange everything. So Denny, he hatched in February and he is $115. And I have two more standing day geckos from this same pair. Um, and both I think are actually also boys. So we have subadult number one, or hatchling number one, sorry. This is Fairfax. Um, this guy hatched at the beginning of August, and 
we have one more little hatchlings. These guys are just two months old, but they've already doubled in size. They grow super, super quick. Um, and they're omnivores, so they're eating insects and they're also eating Pangea um, or fruit. Um, and this second little hatchling here, um, also a possible male, is named Napa and is 85. So both of the hatchlings are 85. Um, and that concludes standings day geckos. Um, so we're gonna move on from day geckos here and we are going to meet a nocturnal gecko from Madagascar. Let me just stick her in this cup really quick. Um, so Madagascar, as you all probably know, is this crazy amazing island where all these different animals have evolved and radiated to fill all the different niches there are. Um, so geckos are one of those animals that have done really, really well. And um, so the next gecko that we are going to meet is um, Europlotus lineatus. So this is a lined leaf tail gecko. Um, and these guys come from the other end of the island. They come from the northeastern side where it's very, very humid. Um, and it's actually a bamboo forest. So these geckos live in a bamboo forest, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so these guys are babies. They hatched in August. They're captive bred babies. Um, they are insectivores, so they're eating things like dusted crickets and dusted um, roaches. And I'm gonna scoop these over here so we have a little more space to get a closer look at our lineatus here. And uh, the Europlotus lineatus is one of the biggest species of leaf-tailed geckos. They get almost a foot long. Um, and they sleep with their heads facing down, which is kind of cool. Um, so when you're setting one up, you want to give them lots of stuff to climb on, um, lots of bamboo, and also um, rougher sticks to help them shed. They're a high humidity gecko, but they also want good airflow. So they're not the easiest gecko to keep alive, um, but they are very rewarding because they're just so fun to watch. Um, getting comfy, comfy here, let's see. So we have three boys and three girls available for you today. Um, and Europlatus lineatus go through firing up and firing up just like gargoyles and crested geckos do, but it's kind of different. It's not so much color, it's actually their pattern that changes, which is pretty insane. Um, so this first one we have here, um, this is a female. Oh my gosh, she is so cute. Um, she is trying to climb up here. Um, so this female is named Doris and she is $300. This is Doris. Um, and I'm going to stick her back in her cup. Um, the rest are very nicely sleeping. So I will show you them in their cup, but I'm not going to pull them out as they don't love being touched. So this isn't a pet that you're going to want to get to play with. You know, you'd get a crested gecko or a gargoyle gecko if you want an animal that you're going to take out and play with. Um, this is an animal that you set up a really cool house for and you watch. So let me stick Doris back in here. Um, so I will show you our three females first. And then we'll move on to our boys here. Um, so this next female is Lasco. Um, she is also 300. And then our third female is, oh no. And she's 300. So our three girls are all 300 each. And we have more boys than we have females, but today we're going to meet three boys as well. And our three boys are 250 each, so let's meet our first boy here. Our first boy is Viola. Wonderful boy name. Um, and he is 250, so that is Viola, and he is 250. And then we have... Shasta here and Shasta is fast asleep and um, Shasta is $250. Move the little tail here. These guys do have a black tongue. If they get scared they're going to show you their black tongue. If they're drinking water you'll also see their little black tongue come out. Um, I've seen them sleeping upside down, hanging from their back feet, um, just hanging down off the screen and off um, sticks, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, I haven't ever seen any other gecko that does that. Not that there isn't another one. I just haven't seen it. 
Um, we have one more Europlatus lineatus for today, and that is number four here, and this is Trekkie. And Trekkie is also $250. So Europlatus, summary, um, leaf tail geckos, and they're found all over Madagascar. Not this species, but there are different leaf tail geckos found um, across the island. Some are very small, some are a lot bigger. Um, and these guys are on the bigger side of Europlatus, but most of them want high humidity and good airflow and cooler temperatures. None of, none of them want to get super hot. Awesome, so now that we have met our Madagascar geckos, I think we'll move on to our New Caledonian geckos. So we're gonna head to another island. This island is off the coast of Australia. Uh, it's called New Caledonia, and um, that's where gargoyle geckos and crested geckos from, and lychee geckos and urodactylodes. But today we are going to meet gargoyle geckos, because as you know, that's what we do here. We do gargoyle geckos. Um, so I'm gonna turn the time over to John here, um, and I'm gonna go back scene, back of house. <laughs> I'm gonna go back there and hand him the geckos as we go. Um, so uh, let's, let's get started with gargoyles. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. Uh, most of you know me from different programs. Some of you I'm close friends with. And for the new friends that I have yet to meet, hopefully I'll be able to actually meet you in person soon. Uh, right here we have Botsquato. Uh, this is a baby from Mars. I'm from Denzel and Stella. It's the Mars group, excuse me. Um, Denzel and Stella both are in shed right now. So the representation of Botsquato here is a similar representation of the babies that you are about to see. So we have some babies coming up from Denzel and Stella. And... Um, Hadrosaurus, that would be your cute. <laughs> oh, look at this little cutie. Okay, so this is Pescadero. Uh, once again, all of the babies are named after uh, cities in California. Uh, Pescadero is a red and orange super stripe. Uh, you see this color is coming in nicely. Cute little baby. Uh, was born 6-2020, and this is from the Mars group. And Pescadero is going for $350. Let's see if we can get a little... There you go, cutie. Very nice coloration. Uh, we'll throw some red in your projects. We'll throw some lighting, light in your projects if you're trying to lighten up a project. Very cute baby that made a jump for it. Uh, anybody that's seen The Fugitive, <laughs> you're familiar with, he just... He or she just hit a Peter Pan. Uh, this is Blue Gum. It's another cute little baby. So Blue Gum is uh, a red and orange stripe, a little darker than Pescadero. Uh, what I like to call wood grain, look similar to it. Very nice coloration. Very cute, plump baby. And uh, this baby was born on 8-4-20. And this baby goes for $199. Very cute. Wanna get off? Don't jump. Do not hit a fugitive. Alright. Uh, okay, the next baby we have is Copperopolis. Copperopolis is a red and orange super stripe. Uh, these colors are coming along nicely. You can see it in the tail, you can see it on the sides. Um, very nice looking. This looks like, uh, to me this looks like, like a lavender, like the sides are like a lavender or like a purplish on the sides. Um, this baby was born 7720. Uh, another Mars group baby and is going for $350. And once again, um, very healthy baby, nicely little, little plump. It sounds like I'm describing like I'm Hansel and Gretel, but <laughs> uh, very nice looking baby. And this is Copperopolis. And then this is actually a pretty good- um, Contrast. Yeah, to show fired up and fired down, so. So right, oop. Right here we have Copperopolis, and this is Dewdrop. This is Copperopolis, and 
what Audra was just describing, the fired up to fire down, the contrast to it. So if we can see right here. So it's like light and dark. And once again, it's, it's those nice colorations, those nice stripes to it. And it's, it's a very beautiful tone. So Dewdrop is a red orange super stripe born 7920. So we get no I'll take copper off Yeah, this. no confusion. So Dewdrop, there you go. You want to get off? No? Okay. <laughs> it's a red and orange super stripe, born 7920. And Dewdrop is going for $400. And this is a nice ass baby. It's nice. Nice, 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 nice. Let's see. You gonna let me grab you? All right, up next we have a jumper. There we go. This is Lobitos. Ooh. All right. All right, so Lobitos is a red super stripe, uh, possible female. Uh, these babies, when they're this small, we don't sell them as sex um, because of the purpose of that. If we can't see um, anything, we don't want to guarantee that it is a male or a female. But uh, it's being sold as a possible female. It's a red super stripe born on 4 5 20 and going for $350. And once again, you can see these lavender undertones on the, on the side. Very nice striping. Overall, just a beautiful... Gargoyle Gecko that will throw red into a project, will lighten up a project, and once again, it always doesn't have to be a project. It can be a pet. It, these are lovely geckos, so uh, this is a very, very beautiful gecko that is once again trying to make an escape. Go. And that is Lobitos. Alright, so now we're going to switch over to our Neptune babies. Um, if you have questions about what our babies look like, um, all of our, our adults, all of our adults are on our website. And we're going to put the link into the chat if you want to um, see what these parents look like. Alrighty. So we are moving on to, as Audra said, to the Neptune babies. This is Willows. Willows is a orange retic. Retics are my favorite when it comes to gargoyles because of the way the patterning uh, is. It's, it's just lovely. Um, very, I have described it before as a, a combination, like almost like, I don't know what you call those pictures. Do you remember the pictures when you would look at it and be like, you try to see the image, but the image is not clear. It's, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but I that's, called yeah, you know, you remember those? Yeah, you like crush your eyes a yes. little bit and something comes um, out. <laughs> The retic pattern uh, looks similar to that. So this is Willow's an orange retic born 71420 and is going for $199. And once again, a very just beautiful baby. It's very nice. I love the retic gargoyles. Come on, Willows. Come on. And once again, this is from the Neptune group. So we have switch groups from the Mars. Oh, somebody He's was talking. <laughs> I'll probably okay. get bit. <laughs> this is Devil's Elbow. Um, no, you guys, it's not my elbow. <laughs> the gecko is named Devil's Elbow. Uh, this is a banded, uh, it's a really dark base, so it's a banded gargoyle baby. This was hatched 81620 and going for $99. And uh, this baby is nice. This baby is cool. Uh, has some, some, coloration going down the tail and overall this is like a grayish hue like a grayish orange hue and uh it's a very cool looking baby uh very 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 cool and this is devil's elbow born ah hatched eight sixteen twenty and going for 99 dollars why do i keep saying born why born all right auburn this is Auburn, uh, Auburn, the city near Sacramento. Most of, us, most of us have been there or passed through it going to Tahoe or wherever it may be. 
And Auburn is an orange blotch. Hatch 7720. And going for 399. Uh, once again, you have some nice coloration going down all the way from the head to the uh, full length of the tail. And looks like some, like a lavender, like hueish to the siding. And very nice, baby, if you are um, looking to pit some orange and you know, some light coloration in one of your projects. Shout out to Miguel in Santa Rosa. Miguel, I know you're watching because you are one of the most loyal people. And Miguel would be negotiating with me right now at a show to the end of the show right now if he was seeing this. So uh, this is something that will brighten up a uh, project and put some nice orange coloration in it. And once again, this is Auburn, a orange blotch hatch 7720 and going for $3.99. Delphinus group here. All right, so this is Delphinus group. As Audrey just said, this is the first baby from it. This is Alameda. Now, I just described with Devil's Elbow how that that uh, you know that coloration will lighten things up. Uh, so I said I have two favorite colorations or patterns when it comes to gargoyles: reticulated and Alameda. Right here is a red and white super stripe. This is what I love because this looks like similar to wood grain. For those who have been up, those of us who have been to sawmills and just we love trees, um, this pattern is very has like a nature tone to it. It has like a wood grain, a natural tone, overtone to it. Um, Alameda it was hatched six thirteen twenty and is going for one hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know why Alameda is going for this cheap, Audra. I don't know what you're doing. But Alameda might get kidnapped by me. Expo but... <laughs> prices, while you can. This is a very nice, I love this coloration. Uh, she has uh, light and dark. When I say she, I'm talking about Audra, not the gecko. Um, and it's just a very nice overall just pattern to it. Once again, this is Alameda from the Delphinus group. And Alameda is a red and white super stripe going for $150. Somebody snatch it. Before I do. Let's see. Sibling hatched the exact same day. And this is Ramona. Come on. Uh, all right. Ramona is a red and orange stripe. Uh, as Audrey just said, hatched the same day, 61320 from the Delphinus group. And going for $199. And uh, I'll let Ramona down. Uh, which you can see with Alameda was a little, a little bit more like a um, a chocolate coloration, like the the darker, the darker um, pattern on Alameda was more of like a chocolate hue. Uh, this is more of a grayish, orangish hue to it. And Ramona still beautiful, uh, just like Alameda. Very nice, very nice. So you have some red red striping going down the back and, and orange. So the two are hitting each other. And um, it's a beautiful baby, beautiful baby. Ramona's going for $199. And this is also from the Delphinus group. All right. So this would be the Mercury group. Uh, so we're going to switch over from Delphinus to Mercury. The first baby from the Mercury group would be Sacramento. Shout out to Sacktown916, all our friends down in Sacramento. Uh, so Sacramento is a brown stripe, uh, hatched 62320 from the Mercury group, our first baby entering the Mercury group and going for $75. Um, when I first got into reptiles and when I first got into fish or all the various things that I'm into and I didn't of course I didn't have a lot of money I was young um I started off with hats and um for for those of you that know what het mean uh but basically I started off with cheaper uh lower tier whatever it may be I think my first animal was a red tail boa but basically entry level stuff and to get into stuff and this will be one of those examples a little bit on the cheaper end if you don't want to go out and spend that $600, $300, or whatever it may be, but still a very beautiful baby. 
And uh, this is how something would be an example of how you can start off with that. So once again, this is Sacramento, our first baby from the Mercury Group, going for $75. Ooh, I like that. All right, this is Martinez. My brother lives in Martinez. This is a yellow base stripe. Uh, hatch 52920, also going for $75. And as you can see, what we had with Sacramento, that was more of a darker brown stripe. This is a yellow base stripe. So it's like the reverse contrast to it. And fired up, fired down. Fired, yes, took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> fired up, fired down. And uh, I think, don't, don't you jump. Um, very beautiful baby, very nice. Um, if you want to lighten up that project, we'll do the job. Uh, once again, this is Martinez, a yellow base stripe. Hatch 52920 and going for $75. Come on. Yo. Uh, oh. Another fire down. Oh, it looks like he's getting ready to shed. Too. Yes. This baby's in shed. Ooh. This is Hayward. From those of us from the Bay, we call it the Haystack. Uh, this is a yellow base striped. Uh, Hayward is in shed now. So it might be a little hazy on the um, coloration as you guys would see in the camera. But uh, overall, very nice baby. Uh, hatched out $625.20 and is going for $149. And this is Hayward. And as you, you can even see under the shed, it has some yellow coloration under the shed. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to shed out to very, very, very nice. Want to come? I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of Dink and saying, load up. That's what I was about to say. You want to load up? Actually uh, blending really well with your shirt. <laughs> That's striping. Okay, so this is Larkspur. From those of you that are familiar with the Marin area, the city of Larkspur. Uh, Larkspur is a yellow base stripe. And hatch 71520, uh, this would be the final baby from the Mercury group. And it's going for $125. And this has, um, those of us that drink coffee, drink lattes, when you have somebody that do, does like a fancy drink and you have the pattern on top of your drink, this, this sort of is like an overtone like that to me with the pattern of this baby. It has some like mixing in between colors of uh, overtone. And once again, this is Larkspur. Hatched out, $7.15.20 and going for $125. So next, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we've never done this before. Thank you. And um, we're going to be offering two different groups. Uh, first, we're going to start off with the orange blotch group, orange blotch. Uh, we have four different bloodlines. Uh, would be an overall value of uh, around 1,350, but we're letting all four geckos go for uh, 700 together. Uh, so. Let's get on to this. So, let's see. So, we would have from the Pluto. This is Murata from the Pluto group. And Murata is an orange blotch. And as you can see there, very, very nice. Very nice. Let's see. This would be for this would be from the Neptune group. And this would be Daisy. Daisy is an orange blotch from... Uh, Lithia and Atomic Fireball. Those of you familiar with Atomic Fireball, uh, a crazy sparky gargoyle, very nice coloration. Held the coloration through adulthood, very, very nice. That is Daisy from the Lithia and Atomic Fireball. All right, so let me, now that I've got my bearings together, this is Spreckles. <laughs> All right, so that would be Spreckles. Spreckles is from the Neptune group. And we would finish it off with the orange box, and this would be Alta. Alta is from the Saturn group. So this would be a orange blotch group, and uh, 
overall, if you're looking to just say, hey, I'm just starting the whole project all together with separate bloodlines, but I want to go towards more of a orange, you know, coloration with this, this whole group, then yeah, that's something that you could think about, something that you could do. And uh, once again, we don't really offer these, these groups uh, like this, um, and we're doing this for the show. So yes, this is a beautiful, very beautiful uh, orange watch group that we have right here. All right. We have one other gargoyle group that we're going to offer today. And this would be the red stripe group. Make sure. Oh, thank you. Leave this a little crack so that tail moves out the way. I'll trade you for him. All right, so the red stripe group has two different bloodlines. All right, overall value $1,450 and $700 for all four geckos. Alrighty, so let us get and see what we have here. So, Alright, so this is Salinas. Uh, those that are familiar with Salinas near Monterey. Very beautiful city. Uh, this is uh, Salinas. Salinas is a red stripe uh, with red tailed dorsals from the Mars group. And that is just, I mean, I don't need to, life finds a way. <laughs> I don't need to say anything on that baby. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Uh, this would be, is it Omira or Mira? I think it's Omira. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can go with Omira. This is Omira. Uh, man, that was nice. Omira is a red orange super stripe, also from the Mars group. Uh, this baby is nice. It's really nice. It has like a combo of multiple things I've talked about thus far. Uh, some like lavender hue to it. Um, some orange, some red, some chocolate, some, it's like a Skittle pack. It has a little bit of everything. So if you're just looking just, oh, I just want a combo pack. Omira will do it for you. Um, let's see, this is, this is Fiddletown. Fiddletown is a red and orange super stripe from the Jupiter group. And Fiddletown also has that lavender oranges hue to it, and it's very nice. So Salinas, you can see, is uh, uh, in contrast and comparison to Fiddletown, and you have something to work with there. It's just very, 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 very nice. And uh, the town that is right next to Salinas, we have Monterey to finish out this red stripe group. And Monterey is a yellow race in red and orange stripe from the Jupiter group. And this this group overall is just, how do you want it? How do you want to throw it all together? How do you, what is your project? What is, what is motivating you to pit these colorations together? And um, when you look at these, all of these babies, uh, I mean... It's very nice. It's very nice. I really like. What is this? 408. So, uh, what is this one right here? I'm trying to find. Omira. Oh, Omira is nice. Omira right here is this one in the front. I really like that. But yes, this is. Let me stop talking about me and what I'm. <laughs> this is the red stripe group. Uh, two different bloodlines. Seven hundred for all of these together, and uh. Overall, very, very, very nice group. Alrighty. And we're going to end the day with Saturn. Uh, and the Saturn group produces some of the nice blotches. Uh, so we're going to end the day with the Saturn group. And let me get these tops on here so nobody makes a jailbreak. And we will get straight to that. I did not know you had something in your hand. <laughs> All right. So this is Vina. And Vina would be the first from the Saturn group. Uh, produces some nice blotches. I think Vina just like fired up just like right now. Um, 
possibly orange base retic. Uh, hatched out 81620 and it's going for $175. And this is a nice uh, the retic I had showed you earlier was um, a little bit darker, and this Vena has it's more of a lighter uh, retic with some orange coloration in it. So, very, very nice. And once again, this is the Saturn group. This is Vena. Hatch 816 and going for $175. Hello. Okay, this is Pacific. A yellow base orange watch. Hatch 71420 and going for $150. And that is Pacific from the Saturn group. Very, very nice orange blotches. And then, yeah, this group throws out those orange blotches for sure. Once again, that is Pacific. Surprised I haven't been bitten yet. But now that I just said it, I will be. <laughs> okay, sorry, little dude. Okay, so this is Gold Run. <laughs> Gold Run. That's trying to run. This is Gold Run. It's a banded orange blotch. Hatch 81620 from the Saturn group. And Gold Run goes for $299. And this looks like, I mean, I mean it, it'll grow up basically. It's holding this color as a baby. So you can imagine the coloration it would hold as an adult. Some very nice blotching going on there. And uh, this is Gold Run. Very nice tail. Very nice. And it was on the run a minute ago. Uh, but yes, this is Gold Run, a banded orange blotch. Hatch 81620 and going for 299 Alright, next we have Carlo. Alright. Carlo is a orange super retic. Um, one of, uh, <laughs> for those of you who know Dr. Hammond, he would say, spare no, spare no expense. One of the best orange watches on the show. Uh, hashed out 8620 and is for $1,200. And this is Carlo. Another nice baby that you wonder, like, what is this baby going to look at? Uh, look like as an adult? It's holding coloration. On the legs, the, the feet, the tail, the head, you have coloration everywhere. So you have some lavender overtones going mixed in with blotches of orange. And once again, something that you would be like, oh, I'm opening up a Skittle package. What is going to be in the Skittle package? And you would have Carlisle. Very nice baby. Very, very nice. Look at that. All right, so this is Colfax. Uh, a lot of us familiar in the Bay as well, Colfax uh, in the peninsula. And uh, Colfax is a red and orange skeleton blotch. This is a very nice gecko. Um, it's almost as if it's like barcodes, like big barcodes down its back. Uh, was hashed out 7220. And this is the last baby from the Saturn group. And this baby is going for $1,500. Once again, for whoever gets these two last babies, Carlo and Colfax, please keep in contact with, with us because I would love to see how these two grow up as adults. You ready? Okay. We're going to have a break coming up. Next, we're going to go to my spirit animal and my good friend. Um, from the East Bay Vivarium, and uh, they will be coming up next, and we will see you guys soon. Bye. Peace out.
Oh, yep, there's three of them. You see four? I see three right now. Hi guys, welcome to East Bay Vivarium. I'm John, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, today we're going to start with corn snakes. We've got a couple of classic corns here. Both of these are from uh, Okatee to Amel crosses. They are brother and sister. Uh, the one on uh, here is CCRN1, is the male at $39. Uh, his sister over here, CCRN2, uh, is also $39. Bucks. They are brother and sister, so if you're looking at doing breeding, let me show you some other stuff that you could cross this with. Okay, here we have a couple of anathristic corn snakes, which uh, means they're lacking the red pigment. So these will be silver, gray, and black animals uh, with white as they get older. Um, on your left here, we have a male, which is ANCRN2 uh, for $45. And on your right, we have ANCRN1, the female, also for $45. Okay, here we have a pair of amelanistic corn snakes. On your left here we have uh, the female, ACRN1. Uh, she is $45, and her brother here on your right is ACRN2, also for $45. Here we have a pair of motley anethristic corn snakes, so lacking the red pigment and having their pattern inverted. So instead of having a dark uh, saddle on a light background, we have a light uh, saddle on a dark background. Uh, the one on your right here, uh, your left here is the female, A-N-M-C-R-N-1. Uh, she is $70, and her brother here to uh, your right is uh, the male, A-N-M-C-R-N-2, also $70. All right, here we have a pair of blood corns. Uh, on your left here, we have uh, the male, B-R-C-R-N. At $49, blood corns um, are born looking uh, like a standard corn, but the pattern is going to fade out to one solid brick red snake. Um, off to your uh, right here, we have the female, which is actually a pie-sided, low-expression pie-sided blood red corn. So again, the pattern is going to fade out to a solid blood red corn, uh, but it will have these random blotches of white along its side as well. This one is $59. Okay, here we have another pair of blood corns. These are sun-kissed blood red corn snakes. So uh, again, the blood corn snake gene is going to end up being a solid colored snake, usually a dark brick red, but the sun-kissed gene sort of brightens that up, kind of takes away a little bit of the melanin uh, and causes the snakes to be much more brighter, not like an amel, but much brighter uh, 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 red than, than you would see in the standard blood. Um, the one on your left here is the uh, male, is SKBRCRN one and is $59. The one on your right here is SKBRN, excuse me, SKBRCRN2 uh, and is, the, oh, is also a male. So we got two boys here. I didn't have any females left of the sun-kissed corns, but this would be great to plug into any of the other bloodstock. Okay, more fun with blood corns. These are some caramel bloods. Um, every time we mix various things with blood corns, we're not entirely sure what the uh, adults are going to look like. Generically, though, these guys are sort of a, as the name would imply, caramel color uh, and sort of, again, patternless as they grow older. So they have what looks to be a caramel color, uh, excuse me, a caramel pattern now, uh, but will be sort of a solid caramel snake and not have the blotches that you see. Uh, the one on your uh, left here is the female, is CBRCRN1. 
uh, is $59. And over on your right here is the mail at CBR CRN2, also $59. Okay, so here we go, sort of the pinnacle of the blood stuff. We've got uh, what we have are caramel sun-kissed blood red corn snakes. Um, on your uh, left here we have the female, which is SKCBRCRN1, uh, is 69 bucks. And over on your right is the male at SKCBRCRN2, as well as 50, also $59. Okay. We have here the last of our butter corns for the year. Um, this is a female, and of course she decided to go right into shed before we started photographing, so she's not as glorious as she normally would be. Uh, but nonetheless, it will be a really nice bright yellow and orange snake. Uh, she is $49, and her number is B-U-T-C-R-N, period. <laughs> she's the last one. Okay, what we have here are cave rat snakes. Elafe Tenura Ridleyi. These two are brothers. They are each $300. This is CRS1. And this guy here is CRS3. We skip some numbers because I've got some unrelated stuff that we'll show you here in a second. Okay, here we go. These are the females from another mother of the cave rat snakes. The one on your left here, CR, whoa, CRS2, uh, female, $300. And wants to bite. And on your right here, we have the, hey, we have the other female in there. CRS4, also $300. Ready to go, not want to be in this cup anymore. All right, more Asian rat snake fun. We have here the Thai bamboo rat snake. This is a uh, Elafe porphyrsia coxi. Uh, this is a female and is 225 bucks. Okay, let's move on to king snakes. So here we have a couple of uh, Goins king snakes, sometimes called South Georgia king snakes, watched king snakes, Apache Cola king snakes, and whatever you call them, they're awesome. Uh, these guys are both males. Uh, the one on your left here, GK1, uh, $75. The one on your right here, GK2, also $75. Bucks. Uh, they are born with a little bit of red in them. Most of that, if not all of that, will fade out and become pretty much just a black and white king snake. They get very, very large, really cool animals. Here we have a couple of Florida king snakes. These are both het for both anathristic and for hypomelanism. Breed them together, one in 16 will be a silver. Um, these are actually both female, so that would be diff tough to do. Uh, but uh, the one on your left here, H-A-N-F-K-S-1, is $65 uh, and is a female. And the one here on your right, H-A-N-F-K-S-2, also $65, uh, is not in shed. So this little ball of snake here, uh, not representing well of its color, uh, is deep in shed. This one here, a little bit truer to what we'd expect it to see. Okay, more Florida fun. We've got a couple of Florida king snakes here that are hypomelanistic. The one on your uh, left here is HBK1, is the female for $75. Uh, the one on your right over here, HBK2, also $75 bucks, is the male. 
These guys, as they grow, uh, will be pretty much a bright golden snake with just small hints of, of, of dark flecks on them. Uh, they're very dark now, but they're gonna actually be quite impressive once they get older. Okay, here we have a couple of Mexican black king snakes. These are uh, uh, brothers. Uh, the one on your left here, MBK1, as a male, is $200. His brother here on your right, MBK2, also $200. Bucks. A little bit bigger than the other guy. Okay, and here we have an unrelated female, MBK3. Also 200 bucks would be a great pairing in that she is uh, neither father nor mother related to the other two we just saw. Okay, here we have a pair of Sinaloan milk snakes. On your left is the female, H-A-S-M-S-1. Uh, $95. She is het for albino. And over here on your right is the male, H-A-S-M-S-2, also for $95, also het for albino. Okay. Albino Sinaloan milk snakes. On your left, we have the male, ASMS1, for $149. Uh, on the right, we have the female, ASMS2, also for $149. Okay, here we have a couple of Honduran milk snakes, extremely active, ready to go home. Uh, the one on your left here is a female, tangerine. HSHMS1 uh, is $125. Uh, these are both het for snow. Uh, the tricolor on your right here, HSMS2, also female, also $125. Here we have a couple of variable king snakes. Uh, on your left here, we have a female that's VARI1, and on our Right here is the other VARI2, both females, both $125. Okay, these are something I'm pretty excited about. These are Durango Mountain King snakes, Lampropeltis mexicana greeri. Um, each of these is $300. The one on your left here is the male, DMTK1. Uh, and over here on our right is the female, DMTK2. Again, both $300. Bucks. Really kind of a rare snake. We don't see these much. And here we have the third Durango Mountain King Snake, another female. Unfortunately, this gal here is in shed, so not showing all of her uh, glory. Um, DMTK3, 300 bucks. Okay, here we have a couple of Kenyan sand boas, very popular dwarf boa pet. Uh, on your left here, we have KSB1 female for $49, and off here on to the right, KS. B2 uh, is also a female, also $49. This one almost has a little bit of the tiger barring going on, not quite, but a really good looking animal. Okay, here we have a couple of anethristic Kenyan Sambos, so lacking the yellow and orange that would uh, otherwise be in the animal, so sort of a uh, black and white animal. Uh, as they get older, we, they look a little bit bluish, pinkish now, but uh, as the animal's skin gets thicker, the, uh, the white color will whiten up. Uh, the one on your left here, ANKSB1, is the male for $65. And here over on your right, ANKSB2, is the female, also $65. Okay, hooray for more Samboas. These are a couple of striped Kenyan Samboas. The one on your left here, SKSB1, is the male for $99. Uh, and over here to our right, SKSB2 is the female for 99 bucks. 
stretch them out and show you the stripes. Ooh, slow down there, Speedy. All right, and here we have the highway, a anathristic striped Kenyan sand boa. So again, the stripe isn't as exaggerated as it will be as it gets older and the skin thickens up and the white becomes more white. Uh, but this uh, male here, S-A-N-K-S-B-1, uh, is $149. Okay, here we have a pair of rough-scaled sand boas, Eric's Conicus. Uh, these are unrelated. They are both a project of mine that I'm trying to uh, pump up oranges and get their patterns reduced to blotches. You can really see it coming out on this guy here. Uh, the one on your left, RSSB1, is a female uh, for $99. And the one on the left, also a female, unrelated, RSSB2, uh, is $99 as well. Here we have the male rough scaled sand boa, RSSB3, um, 99 bucks. All right, another flavor of sand boa, the smooth scale or Indian sand boa, Eric's John Eye. Uh, these guys are born bright orange, but are actually going to end up turning a chocolate brown by the time they're full grown. It is the largest of the sand boas. They can get almost as big around as a wiffle ball bat and almost as long, they're about three feet, so a really big animal by Sambo standards. Both of these guys are females. Uh, the one here on your left, ISB2, uh, is 99 bucks, and on the right, ISB1, uh, also female, $99 as well. Okay, here we have one of my favorite boas, the rosy boa. These are Cape rosy boas from the tip of Baja. Uh, the one we have here on the left is the male, C-A-P-E-1, for $89, and here on the right, C-A-P-E-2, is the female, also $89. Really handsome snakes. Don't get any bigger than, say, two and a half feet tops. Okay, and I think this is one of my favorite rosy bows, the Bay of L.A. or Bahia de los Angeles rosy boa, found about halfway down Baja. Uh, these guys are going to get sort of a blue-green background as they get older with a really nice clean red stripe. Really, really cool pet. This is a little male, BLA1 for $89. Here we have some children's pythons. These are the second smallest python in the world. Uh, both of these guys are males. Here we have on your left, CP1 uh, for $89. Uh, here on the left, CP2, also $89. Uh, they are unrelated. Okay, and here we have the female children's python, CP3, uh, also for $89. Uh, one thing about the children's pythons is that they are born with a really strong pattern. As they grow, that pattern is going to fade out and be sort of a, sort of a suggestion of the pattern. Uh, males will hold a little bit better pattern than the females, uh, but a very, very nice snake nonetheless. Okay, here we have their slightly larger cousin, the spotted python, the third smallest python in the world. Um, these guys, besides the slight size difference, will actually hold their pattern as they get older. So these guys are going to be a little bit different uh, than the spotted, uh, than the children's, in that they will uh, um, uh, hold that pattern really well as they get older. Uh, SP1 here on the left is a male for 89 bucks, uh, and a little aggro here on the right, SP2 is the female for 89 dollars. He is. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. La 
rana de cristal es un animal que posee una belleza muy particular. Tiene su vientre translúcido y a través de él se pueden observar sus órganos y esqueleto. En el caso de las hembras también se pueden observar los huevos no fertilizados. Hasta hace poco la única especie de rana de cristal que habitaba en México era conocida como rana de cristal de Fleischmann y Alinovatrachium fleischmanni. Esta era la rana de cristal con mayor distribución en el mundo, desde México hasta Ecuador. Sin embargo, en un estudio reciente, a través de un análisis molecular de mitocondria, a la par de otras evidencias morfológicas y bioacústicas de organismos de diferentes países, los autores descubrieron que en realidad esta no es solo una especie, sino un compuesto de al menos tres especies con distribución en diferentes países. De esta manera, el rango de distribución de lo que solía ser esta rana de cristal se muestra de la siguiente forma. Y el Inovatrachium viridicimum, México, Guatemala y Honduras. Y el Inovatrachium fleishmani, Honduras, Nicaragua y Costa Rica. Y el Inovatrachium tatayoi, sur de Costa Rica, Panamá, Colombia, Venezuela y Ecuador. El avance de la ciencia y la tecnología abre las puertas para llegar más a fondo de lo que se creía saber respecto a las especies silvestres. Conozcamos mejor nuestro planeta para de esta forma aprender a cuidarlo. Las ranas de cristal de cualquier especie son un gran espectáculo natural de las selvas húmedas del continente americano. Estos pequeños animales no representan ningún tipo de peligro para las personas. Por el contrario, son criaturas nobles y padres amorosos que se preocupan por cuidar sus nidos de los depredadores. ¿Y tú, ya conocías estos increíbles animales? I thought it wouldn't be a complete reptile expo without a visit from our friend Turok. Turok is a caiman lizard. He turned 10 years old this year. Um, and I got him when he was just four months old from the San Jose Reptile Show as a captive hatchling. Um, caiman lizards are from the Amazon rainforest um, and they have a couple cool adaptations for swimming. Um, one is that they have two sets of eyelids. So one eyelid closes this way, and those are his goggle eyelids for swimming. And then he's got a normal eyelid that closes like we do, and for, you know, closing his eyes and sleeping. And the other thing he has going on for swimming is this huge tail. So this tail is what propels him through the water, um, and he puts his arms and his legs back and uses his tail to move around. His tail is also his defense. So if he were to get really, really frightened, he could actually drop his tail like uh, most lizards could and it would come off and wiggle around, distracting the predator. The predator gets a little snack and Turok can regrow his tail. Um, it'll look ugly afterwards, but it will grow back. And the other way that he uses his tail as a defense um, is actually as a weapon. So if he gets really scared, you're too close, he's not gonna bite you. He's gonna try to hit you with his tail. Um, and he's got these sharp scales across the top of his tail to make it hurt a little bit more. He'll hit you with his tail and then he'll run away. Um, Turok won't actually do that. Turok is very, very tame. Turok has been a, an animal ambassador at Things That Creep for many years now. So he actually goes to classrooms and birthday parties. Um, and he's just, he's super chill. He's very used to people. Um, and very low stress lizard, which is cool. Not all caiman lizards are like this. Um, caiman lizards are one of the most difficult lizards I've ever worked with, um, simply in the fact that they're semi-aquatic. This is a big lizard that wants to swim, so that makes it kind of hard to take care of. Um, but if you have the space and the time, they can be very rewarding, um, although very tricky. Uh, so I let's uh, let's have some lunch with Turok. Uh, follow us into the kitchen here, and we can watch Turok have a snack. Would you like lunch?
Hey all you cool cats and kittens, I'm Kevin with Iron Triangle Reptiles. All right, we're gonna kick this off with an albino Honduran milk snake. This is albino Honduran milk snake, ahm 20 mo one male eating live mice, $200 plus shipping. Next up, we have this lovely lavender California king snake female feeding on live mice and she is 150 plus shipping $55 flat rate buyer <laughs> okay next up we've got this aberrant high white california king snake male id code cadf m01 this little dude is eating thawed frozen mice like a champ. $150 plus $55 flat rate shipping. Now we have this lovely female California king snake, aberrant pattern. She's eating frozen thawed mice. $150 plus shipping. ID code CADFF01. Now we have this lovely Mexican black king snake female eating live mice. She is $150 plus $55 shipping. Flat rate. Why do they all freeze up when I touch them? Here we have what I call the mystery milk snake. Originally obtained as a Nelson's milk snake, and I don't think that's what she is at all. But she is lovely, she's very pretty, she eats frozen thawed mice like a champ, and she could be yours for $125 plus shipping. Behave. Now we've got the mystery milk snake male. He also eats frozen thawed mice like a champ, 125 bucks plus shipping. Now we've got this black rat snake, het for leucistic, eats live mice. Female, ID number BRS0220F01. Now we've got another black rat snake, het for leucistic. This one's a male, $100 plus shipping, eating live mice. Now our next three snakes are gonna be leucistic Texas rat snakes. So this is leucistic Texas rat snake, ID number LTX20F01, feeding on live mice, $200 plus shipping. Here we have leucistic Texas rat snake, LTX0720F01, female, eating live mice, no bug eyes, she's perfect. Now this leucistic Texas rat snake's a little bit different. This little fellow has red eyes. He's feeding on live mice. ID number LTX0720M01, male, $150 plus shipping. Okay, now we have some African house snakes. Small species, males get two, two and a half feet, females three, three and a half feet. Eat like champs, breed like crazy. Fun little guys like to bite sometimes. <laughs> so this is a male, ID number BHS0220M01. 125 dollars plus shipping. Now we have another male African house snake, black phase. Black house snake male, BHS0220 MO2, $125 plus shipping. Eats frozen thawed mice like a champ. And now for the final snake of the day, Leucistic black rat snake. 
This is Leucistic Black Rat Snake ID LBRS0220 FO1. She's $250 plus shipping, eating live mice, hatch date 81620. She's absolutely perfect, no bug eyes, solid white and beautiful. Come back tomorrow for part two. Hi, welcome to designing your terrarium landscape. My name is Sunny, I love plants, and I am here to walk you through the plants that we have available for you this weekend and where they fit into a tropical terrarium. Just a note that all the plants I'm going to be showing you are safe for geckos and frogs and reptiles that don't eat leaves. If you have a veiled chameleon or a bearded dragon, you're going to want to ch check the toxicity levels before you put any of these plants in your terrarium. Getting started, we have two categories of plants. We have tropical foliage, uh, a lot of different variety in this, but we'll get to that in a moment. And then we have epiphytes. Epiphytes are plants that don't need soil and can be suspended or um, uh, attached to cork, to branches, and they're just going to fill in the canopy of your little indoor tropical forest. This one has some flowers going on. Pretty cute. All right. Orchids, we've got bromeliads. You're probably familiar with bromeliads. If you aren't, they are these delightful little cone-shaped plants. Also great for hiding if you've got a small animal, a little frog that just likes to get in there. And if you're lucky, they give you beautiful flowers. Tomorrow, we're gonna be setting up a, an actual terrarium. Me and Audrey are gonna do it together. And so today, we're gonna pick the plants that we're gonna use in, a, in tomorrow's demonstration. So when you're picking plants for your terrarium, I think it's a good idea to start with the biggest plant and also to start from the ground. So um, let's take a look at some of our big plants we have here today. We want something that's going to be dense, it's going to have a lot of foliage, uh, reptiles, frogs, any arboreal uh, geckos or frogs are really going to love these plants because they've got little spiral new leaves that they can just crawl into and sleep in like a little cocoon. Um, this is a tenanthi. This is part of the Calathea family. We've got plants that are going to make great ground cover. Something like our nerve plant. This is our pink Phytonia nerve plant. is going to fill out really nicely over the ground. Um, as is our Pilea glauca, which has got a really sad name. It's called tear, the tears plant. Um, that's going to just spread out over the bottom of your, of your terrarium. We have climbing plants, like our, our creeping figs. This is a really nice, this is a variegated form of it, but we also have a green one. Um, these are gonna climb up the back, so you're gonna get some nice wall action going on there. And then we have, uh, you know, upright, upright plants. We have ferns, a lot of variety in ferns. This is a blue star fern, it happens to be one of my favorite. I love any plant that has a blue tint to it, go figure. For tomorrow's terrarium build, I'm going to pick a medium-sized plant. I'm going to go with an Aglionema because I like their flat leaves. I think geckos really like sleeping on them. And the new leaves come out in little pearls, as I showed you earlier, and I like that. So let's go with this pink beauty here. This is a Valentine Aglionema. Cute. All right, so that's going to be our main plant. Um, I want to do a ground cover plant to go with this. So I'm going to pick, it's a Pilea Pan Am, which uh, does well in low light as well as medium in direct light. So it's really great for ground cover and it just spreads out fairly fast grower. If it starts to get too tall, you're just going to pinch it back, take those little babies off the top and it'll keep it nice and flat across the ground. Um, and for a little bit of variety, switch things up a bit. Why don't we pick a plant that's going to go up the back of the terrarium? I really like this creeping fig. I think the green's going to look really pretty with the, um, the pink and the valentine. So let's put that there. We have our ground cover, our main statement plant, and our creepy crawly up the back creeping frig, fig. So that's pretty good for tropical foliage, I think. We should move over to epiphytes. Epiphytes. 
They grow on trees. Um, let's pick a bromeliad. I think I may be going too far with the pink, so I'm going to stay away from the pink. I keep trying to pick pink plants. Um, let's do this cool striped bromeliad. Look at that. Very cool. That is going to attach somewhere on a branch or on the back of the, uh, the back of the terrarium on the bark. We haven't decided yet. We'll figure that out. And then let's pick an orchid. What orchids have we not talked about? We talked about this cutie with the flowers. So let's do, and to be clear, all of these will flower if they're well taken care of. This just happens to be the one that has flowers right now. So let's pick, all right. We're gonna go with the Bulbophyte phylum Dennis EI. Latin. Okay, there's our orchid. Finally, last last thing we're gonna do is some Tillandsia. I want to pick something that's shapely, something spiky, something interesting. Staying away from pink. Learn my lesson. Um, let's go ahead and do. A classic little air plant Tillandsia. I don't know all these ones' names. I think this is an Ionanthe. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, and then last, this is the last touch. Last touch. We're just gonna do a little bit of Spanish moss, and it's gonna be hanging from somewhere. We'll figure out where. Spanish moss is pretty cool. All right. So there we go. Those are our selections for our terrarium tomorrow. Thanks for sticking around through this video and for making it to the end. We have a promo code for you. This is good for 15% off at our website. And the promo code is JEWEL. Yes, JEWEL, like a gem, a diamond, a ruby, a jewel. That's your promo code. See you tomorrow.
Hi, this is Crystal from Pet Shop Santa Cruz. We are a small family owned and operated business here in Santa Cruz, California. We specialize in exotic reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates, as well as tropical community aquariums. We're sad that we can't be with you in person today to share with all of these amazing animals, but are very thankful to Lick Your Eyeballs for hosting and inviting us to be a part of this very special reptile expo, where we can both connect with you and keep everyone safe. Now we will be showing you some of our available animals, as well as some of our personal pets here at Pet Shop Santa Cruz. Starting off with our available animals, this is a blue tongue skink. Blue tongue skinks are a great beginner pet. They normally have very great dispositions like this skink does, and they're also packed full of personality. As you can see, this guy has a very nice high contrast yellow and black in his patterning on his back and all the way down his tail, making for a very beautiful animal. Our next available animal is a pink tongue skink. Pink tongue skinks are native to Australia. Similarly to the blue tongue skink, they have great dispositions and are generally a great species to keep. Pink tongue skinks have a prehensile tail, which means their tails can actually grasp and hold onto objects. This is a male fire cinnamon lesser ball python baby that I hatched out this year. It has very nice contrast as well as some yellow undertones near its head and facial regions. Ball pythons are a really great beginner pet, especially if you're looking to start with a snake. This is a yellow Aki monitor. Aki monitors are one of the smallest species of monitors. They are not recommended as a beginner pet, but would make an excellent addition to an experienced keeper's collection. Here we have some baby cobalt tink dart frogs. We have two of this type dart frog currently available, as well as one Regina tink dart frog, which can be seen on our website. Dart frogs are an excellent addition to live vivariums and bioactive terrariums. I find that they are very active during the day and absolutely love to hunt insects in their cages. Dart frogs are not for handling, but still, they can create a spark of curiosity and adventure into any home. We have two male juvenile max snow leopard geckos available, one of which is shown here. Leopard geckos are a medium to large sized ground dwelling gecko native to Asia, Pakistan, and northwestern parts of India. They are primarily insectivores. Leopard geckos are easily cared for and can make a very great first pet for beginners. Mr. Hanky is an adult male Priceline Mexican beaded lizard, meaning that he stays smaller than the average Mexican beaded lizard. This type of lizard is venomous, therefore he may only be purchased by an individual who is 18 years of age or older and is an experienced keeper of reptiles. Next we have a juvenile male high red crimson giant day gecko. The giant day gecko is one of the largest species of day geckos and can reach an adult size of approximately 12 inches. 
giant day geckos are not for handling. However, the crimson giant day gecko makes an excellent display animal. Next we have a baby lined day gecko. Lined day geckos are a small sized gecko native to Madagascar. They are diurnal, meaning that they do need a UVB source. They are also semi-arboreal and eat fruits as well as insects. Lined day geckos have big personalities and are a great intermediate pet. They are not for handling, but they make amazing display animals. Our next two available animals are both baby jungle carpet pythons. Jungle carpet pythons are a medium-sized semi-arboreal python species native to tropical forests throughout Queensland, Northern Australia, and Eastern Australia. Jungle carpet pythons are considered to be a very beautiful and highly sought-after quality specimen. Jungle carpet pythons are a long and slender body python reaching lengths of approximately 5 to 7 feet. Their moderate size and beauty can make a great addition to any collection. Carpet pythons are recommended for the intermediate to advanced reptile enthusiasts. Also available, we have a baby ornate box turtle. Ornate box turtles are a terrestrial species of turtle native to the Great Plains of the United States. It is one of the two different subspecies of terrapin ornata, the other being the desert box turtle. Ornate box turtles grow to be about 5 to 7 inches in length. They are not fully aquatic turtles. They spend most of their time on dry land with shallow water nearby. Box turtles are a hardy species of terrestrial turtle with great personalities and fairly simple care, making them a great choice for first-time turtle owners. This is a three-striped devil scorpion. These scorpions are native to Arizona. We currently have two of these scorpions available. They are not for handling, but they make great display animals. We also have a fat tail scorpion available. Fat tail scorpions are found throughout the semi arid and arid regions of the Middle East and Africa. They are among one of the most dangerous groups of scorpion species in the world and are certainly not for handling. However, they do make great display animals. The last scorpion species that we have available is the Diplocentra scorpion. These scorpions are also not for handling, but do make great display animals. We also have two small size Arizona blonde tarantulas available. Arizona blonde tarantulas, as the name suggests, are from Arizona. These tarantulas make very great first pets or first tarantulas in a collection. They are tolerant to being handled and have fairly simple care, making them a good choice for beginners. This is Lola. She is a Colombian yellow-headed redfoot tortoise. Lola is not for sale. She is one of our personal pets here at Pet Shop Santa Cruz. 
Enjoy this short video of Lola eating some of Rapashi Probug's silkworms. Thank you all for joining us at this very special reptile expo. In the last clip of our video, you will be meeting Jeffrey, our Asian water monitor. In the video, he will be eating a frozen thawed quail. To see more of our available reptiles, as well as our available reptile products, visit our website, PetShopSantaCruz.com. I hope you enjoyed your time at the Reptile Expo. Have a great day. That wraps up day one of our virtual Reptile Expo. Make sure you come back tomorrow. Um, we have lots more animals for you to meet, including turtles and tortoises and vinegaroons and frogs, and of course, lots of snakes and geckos, because that's what we do. Um, and Tomorrow we'll be doing our raffle uh, for a crested gecko, a gargoyle gecko, and a cave rat snake. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, we are doing 15% off of anything purchased from our website through tomorrow at midnight with promo code JEWEL, J-E-W-E-L. Um, so you're going to get 15% off of Pangea, plants, adult geckos, etc., etc. So go check that out, leakyoureyeballs.com. We will see you tomorrow.